Are you loving all the farm decor you're seeing trend lately? Did you know you could DIY some of these pieces quite easily? Come on, let me show you. I've got my large Bodabra and I have some quilting strips, but you can make these yourself. Starting out with my Bodabra bow wire, I'm going to fold it in half and load it in my Bodabra. Then I'm going to take my strips and I'm going to separate them. And I'm also using a few pieces of some lace ribbon that I had, two different sizes. The one I'm using in the tails is a one and a half inch wide and the one I'm using in the loops is a two and a half inch wide. Other than that one and a half inch wide lace ribbon that I'm using in the tails, everything is two and a half inches wide and 44 inches long. I've separated the pieces I'm using for the Tails. strips. I've placed them down in the large Bodabra, and now I'm adding the lace as the first layer of loops. You can make your loops larger or smaller. I wish I would have made mine larger, but I started out with about six inch loops, and I was able to get three loops off each section of ribbon. I'm going to be adding a lot of layers to this rag bow. It's going to get repetitive, so I'll speed it up here shortly, but what I'm doing is I'm making six inch loops. I am having to twist my ribbon and my quilting strips. Those are non-wired and you want them to look distressed, so it's okay for them to be floppy. So if you go bigger, it'll look just fine. Just keep layering your colors if you're using different colors like I am and it doesn't matter how many you put in there you want to make it how you want it i'm going to make this one until the bodabra gets full i'm not measuring my loops after the first row i am tapering in slightly not even a half inch and the only time i actually taper in very much at all is at the end when i'm placing that last piece of loop so i can squeeze another loop in if I have any excess pieces that are going to hang out and show or be in my way, I am trimming them off. You could stop here, that looks pretty nice, but I'm going to keep going because I have plenty of these quilting strips and ribbon to use. I wanna see how far I can go. It's getting really thick, but I still have plenty of room. Now, if you noticed, I am alternating my different colors of strips. In between, I'm adding the lace. That's the pattern I established. And the little bit of micro cinching I did with each loop as I got closer to the top actually has given me four loops per strip now. I started out getting three. I have a couple of extra strips, so I'm going to add them back in for tails. The more tails, the better on a rag bow. All right, that bow dabber is nice and full. I'm going to scrunch it down with my Budabra wand and I'm going to place a lemon in to go with the theme we're using. Go ahead and take your Budabra bow wire from the bottom, pull those loose ends through the loop, pull it nice and tight from the front, pull those loose ends to the back of your bow and get it nice and tight. This is a thick one. You want to make sure you secure it well. I like to pull all my loops forward once I have it flipped over. When you pull them forward like that, then pull up on your Bodabra bow wire, you get them really tight. That will ensure you don't have any loose loops that can slip out. Oh, while you're making it, be sure to leave at least a one inch overhang in between each section of loops. This will ensure they get caught by the wire so they don't slip loose on you. Once you have it all tied up nice and tight, give it a good fluffing. A rag bow does not require a whole lot of fluffing, but you want to make sure all the pretty sides facing forward. Now let's make our swag in our large Bodabra. I started out by placing a zip tie in my Bodabra because it's going to be really thick and I don't want anything slipping around. If you noticed, I'm not cutting the stems apart. I'm going to be using the majority of the length of the stem. I'm trimming a piece off at the ends that might be sticking out when I get done and that's all I'll trim. Notice I'm folding them in half and then I'm placing them down in the Bodabra forming a swag. Keep repeating this process as you layer your flowers. If you're using multiple colors, mix your colors up. I started this process out by adding my greenery and my linear stems and then I start adding my fillers as I go, mixing them up and being mindful of the sizes and colors I'm layering. 
This is so they look like they were purposely placed there and not like a big clump when you're finished. I started out with yellow on the bottom and now I'm going to end it with yellow on the top and add my last filler flower in. Zip it up real tight with your zip tie, give it a fluff, and you can use it as a swag like this or you can attach it to some farmhouse wall decor or even a grapevine wreath. We're going to be attaching this Bodabra swag and rag bow to this really beautiful piece of farmhouse wall decor that I found at the Dollar General. Secure it on with a zip tie. I'm gonna give it a quick fluffing and then I'm going to hot glue some of the excess foliage that I had from the stems. I'm going to place them right between the loops to give the bow a little extra frame. Although this step is not necessary and totally optional, I only did it because I didn't want to waste any of the extra pieces. If we would have skipped this step, we would not have had to use any hot glue at all to make this beautiful piece. Everything is secured by Bodabra bow wire and zip ties. Check it out. Give it one last good fluffing and just look at this beautiful, affordable Dollar General farmhouse piece we made. I'm Joette with the Bodabra design team. Thanks for watching.